Pray the Lord, brethren, and God is good. This is another opportunity. God is speaking to us. And this time, I still again come to say, talk about hope. Hope is an ingredient that we all need. Given that this time round, we are back into a kind of lockdown and places of worship, um, that is church buildings closed, but we are well sure that churches are not, be, are not closed because we are the temples of God. And so I come to speak a few moments about the word hope, hope that can uh, give us another opportunity living on another day. And so we pray, Heavenly Father, we thank you that you have given us another chance to live. This is another moment for us to be alive and to think about what you have purposed for us. What we need now is hope, hope in you. And we pray the Lord you speak to us in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends, I bring this portion, uh, Psalms 71 verse 5. The Bible says, um, for you, this is what the Bible says, for you are my hope. O Lord God, you are my trust from my youth. At times like this, we lack words, we lack what to say. But when we turn to God in faith and say like the psalmist, Psalm 71 verse 5, For you are my hope. O Lord God, you are my trust from my youth. We have believed God from the very beginning. Each one of us is at his own level, her own level. But hope is very, very important that God is our hope. And of course, hope is that feeling desire for certain things to happen. And we believe that God purposes something for you and for me. Hope is the confident feeling and expectation of the truths and promises of God. Confident expectation. And so I sit here to say God is our hope because we have that confident expectation, that confident belief that God has never deserted his people, that God has never went away from his own. He remains our God and now it is only up to us to remain confident that God is our help. And so this word hope has something positive. It comes with positive connotation because when you are expecting something, even when things are not going well today, even when sickness is there today, even when COVID-19 is there today, even when poverty is there today, even when there are rampant deaths today, we still believe that God is still in charge. And so that positive, that confident expectation that God is doing something is something that I wanted just to make mention of. And we begin again from where we stopped yesterday. We begin again from where we stopped the other day or even this morning or whatever time that we can keep moving, getting on in the midst of the challenges of life. And so Psalm 39, the psalmist also has something to say. Psalm 39 verse 7, the Bible says, And now, Lord, what do I wait for? Yes, at such a time, what do I wait for? My hope is in you. And so, brethren, I mention, like the psalmist, that what do we wait for during this period, during this season of hopelessness, during this season, during this time of COVID-19, where everything seems to be going a hopeless direction. You, Christian, and I, believer also, we needed to say like David, and now, Lord, what do I wait for? My hope is in you. And so the psalmist puts it point clear. And so here, I just want to mention some three things. Why is God our hope? Why is God our hope during such a time? One, God is our hope because God has the power. Yes, he's our hope because he has the power. He is our power. He can perform what he says Remember, Genesis 1, the world was chaotic. The world was formless. The world was, you know, all things were 
nothing. And God's spirit, the Bible says, was hovering over the whole chaos. And in his power, in his might, he did what he could. And he brought things to order. In the end, the Bible says, God was pleased with what he saw. And so, my brethren, this day, this season, this moment, it is chaotic. Because you hear on um, social platforms, you hear radios, you hear TVs, every page that you open of the newspaper is bad news. Now, where do we run? Like the psalm is saying, my hope is in you. And so God has the power, God has the might. He can do whatever he wishes. And so he has the ability. Our hope is founded on his ability to do what he can. And from the very beginning, this Bible is full of um, instances where God has done mightily. I've just quoted Genesis 1, that chaos that was, even the lives of the people, God can do something great. Now, number two, why should we have hope in God? Our hope is in God because he is a God of provision. God provides. He will provide for us. Remember the people of old. We have always quoted Abraham. We have quoted Isaac. We have quoted Jacob. We have quoted Joseph. We have quoted Moses. We have quoted Joshua. We have quoted Gideon, Jephthah, Daniel, Jeremiah. All those men. And then in the same times, we have quoted Peter, James, all those men. Now, God provides. The reason why Abraham actually gives him the name that Jehovah Jireh, because there are no provides. So provision, my brethren, is in the hands of God. So why do we have hope in God? Because God is the one who provides us with life. He gives you a new day. He gives you a new moment. As long as you still have the breath. I always tell people that as long as the head is still on the body, God is still in control. And many, many people think, ask me, why do you say, oh, as long as the head is still on the body? Because I know God is the one who provides his life. You wake up in the morning, you're still blinking. Your hand is still moving. We say God is still a provider. So he's still a provider, God. So our hope is founded on his loving care. And so I bring to you something this day, this season, this time round, well, as I mentioned here, that God is our, is our hope because he provides. Now, point number three, God is our hope because of his promises. Yes, he, he means what he says. And he, when he promises, he fulfills. Remember, he promised Abraham that this, this, this day, this time next year, when I come back, uh, your wife Sarai will have a child. And he prom when he promises, he doesn't just promise out of virtue. He promises and he fulfills. And this is what gives us opportunity to live for another time, for another moment. You know, when you have been promised something, um, you, you live with eagerness. And so for me, as a believer, I live with eagerness because I, yeah, that even in the midst of this COVID-19, those of us who are still living on, when Jesus says, I will be with you always, that's a promise. And he sent the, his, the, his Holy Spirit to be our teacher, to be our guide. And so he says he will be with us always. He will be with us at all times. This, after the end of age, this is a promise that we need to trust and trust indeed. So our hope, my brethren, is founded on the trust, his trustworthiness. He, 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 when he promises, he fulfills. And God, I believe he's up there in heaven looking at us as we struggle, as, you know, as we travail, as you know, his promises are true. Daniel was in the same situation. The three young men were in the same situation in the book of Daniel, in the midst of the fire, but God uplifted them. And even in the book of, uh, of, of Ezekiel chapter 37, something that actually he mentions there, the dry bones. And I want to dedicate to you during this session, I mean, the, the, about hope. Let me dedicate to you Ezekiel chapter 37. You read verses 1 to 14. It has tremendous message now that speaks to us and um, I dedicate it wholeheartedly to you. Now point number four which is the number last is God is our hope uh, because of his person. You know, God he has a character and his character is trustworthiness. His character, you know there are some people can whom you can depend on <laughs> depending on their character. There are some people who don't go by their word. Even their appearance by the way. You can look at someone and say, mm, can I trust, can I believe this one? But 
depending on how you present yourself from the very beginning. Now, friends, God from the very beginning has presented himself as a mighty God, as an ever-loving father, as a trustworthy God. When he says it, he fulfills it. And so his character enables us to still believe that he can do something. So, uh, remember, um, things happen and his character is faithfulness, his character is trustworthiness, his character is might. And so, I just want to encourage us that we depend on the word of God. I've already dedicated Ezekiel 37 verses 1 to 14 to you, but also dedicate 1 Samuel chapter 1 verse 8 to you, where the, ma the woman was actually was uh, uh, Hannah, Hannah, Hannah was overcome by, you know, by the situation. My time comes, Hannah goes to the house of the Lord and makes a promise and he believes. And when she goes back home, the Bible says in verse 8 that she went away, she went her way and ate and her face was no longer sad. May I encourage you that as I wind up this session, that in the midst of these challenges, of course, actually Hannah went home, ate and drank and her face was not sad. The child was not yet there, but she believed, she trusted God. Now you and I also need to trust God and believe that this situation will come to an end. Hannah believed that the period of barrenness will come to an end. And so she remained moving on, the face no longer sad, because her hope in God was sure. And so my brethren, as I end here, may the Bible, the word of God, encourage us. Hannah had not yet got the child, but she believed that the child would come. You and I also believe that even when COVID is still here, we believe that we who are still alive, God will take it away, that hope there. And other challenges in life, there are so many, innumerable, but God is still in charge. And so we toil, so Paul says, and strive because we have our hope set on the living God. That is First Timothy chapter 4, verse 9 to 10. We toil and strive because we have our hope set on God. So now, there we are. May God bless you and watch over you, setting your hope on God. There's a hymn that says, On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. I wish I had the time to sing it over, but you can look for it. All other ground is sinking sand, our hope set on the living God. May God bless you today and always. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. <laughs>